And then the name Cassette Lord comes from I was running an evil superhero party in my house and we used to live up near uh, Baker Street. And um, we all made up superheroes, like, you know, fake superheroes. And I, I was working with, like, actual cassettes that were building furniture out and stuff like that. And, like, putting light bulbs in. And I made all of my sort of, shirt and leggings and, like, a crown out of cassettes. And I think about three in the morning, someone goes, oh, you lord of cassettes then. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I like that. Yeah. That's, that's where it comes from. So yeah, it's a bit random. Uh, no, not for toast. I like a bit of toast, but the idea of I like the idea of a toaster as a head because it's like you can see the ideas going in and the ideas coming out, and I like that openness. So I suppose a toaster is almost a metaphor for a window. You know? So it's kind of like you're seeing the process of the artist. You know, there's kind of chunks of information going in. You can put anything in and out of a toaster visually, and it shows that kind of input and output. I think that's why I like the idea of a toaster. A toaster model. Yeah, I love the old. I think it's such an over underrated material. Obviously, it's making a bit of resurgence now. It's yeah, it's like liquid gold. You know, if you've got something which is good, you put neon on it, and it's just a power up in an arcade game. Isn't it? You know, it just makes it bigger and better, and it lights it all up. And you know, use it as like a it's a light frame, isn't it? So yeah. I love yeah, lots of work with more. I think it's essential. I think people notice art, they you know, they, they take an interest in it. It's a great way of getting people uh, on board to do new like community initiatives. It unites people, you can feed people into it, they can put their ideas into it and you can execute it and it, it enhances the environment we live in. So it's great for urban regeneration. Well I played with a lot of Lego and Transformers when I was growing up. Uh, so yeah, uh, like full colour organic creativity. You know, I had a, like a, a big sack of Lego, so yeah, I couldn't stop. I was building, I obviously built all the stuff you were supposed to, and then I reconfigured it and like built it again, always using all the right colours and the right lines. I had things unfolding. Before I could afford to buy Transformers, I made Transformers out of Lego and stuff. But yeah, it's great. Once you've once you've done that in your childhood, I think it just kind of carries on with your art in your later life. Just trying to like adapt things that lock together in that sort of OCD way. You know, and when I bought a few Transformers, yeah, it blew my mind. Yeah, seeing one thing unfold into another. That to me, that's art. Um, both physically and mentally, things that have two different meanings, two different meanings. You know, and can physically transform. Yeah. That's what graffiti and street art is as well, isn't it? Transforms the environment. You know, and your perception. So. Art in general, yeah. Uh, well, I can only speak from being a sort of street artist who's like you know making stuff in the public. I'd like more art to be on the streets. I know art in galleries is important, you know, for buyers or for the gallery situation. But the more art which is accessible to everyone on the street, the better. So I mean, for instance, the viaducts there—that's uh, that's like an external gallery, isn't it? If you could just like clean the whole place back and just have large artworks, wood piece of wood bolted to the walls, and you get some lighting, you know. There's, there's a, there's a huge shed sitting, architectural shed sitting in the Brighton. You know, that to me is where more art should be up, and that's how you can use art to transform the environment, and that's where art should go, I think. You know, to enhance places like that. I mean, it's already happening all over the world, you know, transforming huge structures into art, artworks and art forms. You know, street artists, graffiti artists do it, old buildings, um, you know, that's what they've done with the old Tate Modern building as well, it's an old factory, just all that regeneration, you know. And changing, again, changing one thing to another, transforming it, using art. Changing, changing people's attitude on it and their approach and their perception. When I first moved to Brighton from Portsmouth, uh, it, graffiti art, street art was, was exploding in Brighton. You know, it was like Brighton Hip Hop Festival. It, you know, there was so much funding for it. I mean, that, a lot of that, I feel, has died away now. Um, it's more up to the individual now, I think, in Brighton. And it's loads of super talented guys and girls in this town, all doing their piece. They've all got their, their places, both illegally and legally. You know, so it's still a really inspiring place, but I think it's, it's much more up to you to pull your finger out and get out and do it. And that's the advice I would give to anyone. I don't think there's, there's so much funding and money for it. Okay. But you know, it's a motivated, uh, energetic city. So. Well, it's the last part of this part of town that needs something, isn't it? This whole place here has been regenerated. It's going to look great. It's going to be one of the only like green areas in this part of Brighton. So naturally, the next thing is the light. That is 
a, that is a conduit for a lot of people that come into Brighton who are visiting the city. You imagine that kind of as a gallery or an arcade lit. You know, once you, once you enter that portal into Brighton, you think you realise you've arrived in Brighton. It's going to give a sense of presence and a sense of um, coming into the city. It's it's screaming for it, you know. And you know, imagine you've never been to Brighton before, coming in the car and looking up and seeing all these lights at night time, all this art and daytime. You know, it's yeah, it's one of the routes in. It needs to it needs something to happen in there. I'm on Facebook as Cassette Lord and Instagram as Cassette Lord. Uh, obviously, my work is here at Cafe Plenty in Brighton for the month of July. I also sell artwork to Studio 45 in the open market. Market off London Road. A uh, guy in there runs it, Steve's got loads of good street art and graffiti artists working there. Uh, yeah, apart from that, just you can write me direct you know, from my email or you know, Facebook and Instagram as mentioned, really.